Benvenuto, welcome to Cherry Hill Home Cooking. My name is Mark. Today we're gonna to make one of my childhood favorites, corn chowder. Now, we are from a certain place up north where clam chowder is very, very well known, but clam chowder is not particularly one of my favorites, but it is one of Wade's favorites. And I know you all find this very hard to believe, but in all these years, I've never come up with a corn chowder recipe and made it for Wade. But I will, I promise. <laughs> um, kind of what inspired me to make this today was um, uh, Andrew. Andrew, this is a shout out to you. I hope that you make this and hope you enjoy it. Um, this corn chowder um, is for Andrew. All right, so what we're gonna need for corn chowder is, of course, what's the star ingredient? Corn. All right, so I've got four cups of frozen corn. You can use frozen corn, you could use canned corn. If you'd like, you can even use fresh corn, um, but I'm gonna use frozen. Um, and we need some uh, Yukon Gold potatoes. We're gonna need some yellow onions. Uh, we're gonna need some uh, chicken broth. I have run out of our fresh meat, so we're gonna use um, store-bought. Uh, and of course, what turns all of these lovely ingredients into chowder is plenty of heavy cream and whole milk. Okay, this is not a low fat version of corn chowder, but you could bring the fat down a little bit by using uh, light cream. Um, now, if you were gonna use this, have this as a dinner and this was gonna be your own, only dinner, well, it's high in calorie, but you know, if you're not eating, uh, eating anything else along with it. Um, and then we're just gonna need some salt and pepper for our spices. We're gonna need some all-purpose flour to begin our roux. And we need um, a fourth of a cup of salt. And I believe that's all our ingredients. Okay, let's make some corn chowder. Okay, so the only thing we need to do to prep our uh, potatoes is, you know, I've got most of them done. I'm just gonna kind of cut them. Of course, again, with any kind of stew that you're making, uh, or you want everything to cook at the same time, you want them to be about the same consistency, so it's about bite-sized pieces. It's a little bit small, but that'll be fine. Let's get our pot heating up. So we want to start with the pot on medium high. All right, and then the same thing with our onions. Just gonna really rough chop our onions. This is a stew, so we wanna be able to see them all. Get them in there. Okay, so got my pot started to heat up and I'm gonna add my fourth of a cup of butter in there. I don't think I need my knife anymore. I think for now I'm done with this. All right, so we're gonna get our, this is a, I said really quick, simple um, corn chowder. It's really easy to do on the weeknights. Um, oh, this also makes a great uh, starter or soup if you're having a holiday meal. Um, we love it all the time. But it's uh, the nice thing about it is it doesn't have to cook for hours and hours, like a, say a chicken soup or something that you want to get your, uh, uh, you know, the flavor all through your broth and everything. 
So we're going to get that melted. And we're going to get our onions in. Mmm, melting butter. All right, I admit, there's a lot of butter and a lot of cream in this recipe, but we're all going on a diet in a few weeks. Okay, that's pretty good. I'm going to get all, all our onions in there, and we are just going to get those cooking up nice. We just want to, uh, you know, start to caramelize them a little tiny bit. Get them cooking, get them softened up a bit. So I'm going to actually turn my heat up a little higher. Now I'm at about medium, no, probably about, well, not quite high, slightly under that. What is, what is that, honey? What would that be called? It's not medium high. High, medium high? <laughs> I don't know, on this device it's 390. Mm, there's something about onions cooking in butter. Mm. That aroma is, well, just wonderful. <laughs> All right, so we're going to get, like I said, we're going to get our onions softened up a little bit. And so you don't have to stand here and watch me do that. We'll be back in a few minutes. All right, we've been just about five, six minutes. Our onions have started to get a little bit soft. Uh, I've turned my heat down to medium, and we're gonna add our flour. Now, of course, our flour is gonna help our end product be um, nice and chowdery. Um, so with the flour, we wanna go in there, and it needs a good minute minute or two. Of course, what are we doing? So we're making the roux here. Um, and we're also kind of just cooking off that little bit of floury taste of the flour. And you want to keep it moving because you don't want it to burn on you. Kind of one of those things you start to, when you first put it in, you start, you smell the flour. And then as you get in there and cook up the flour, you start to smell the butter again, which I'm starting to smell the butter. So I think we're good and incorporated. All right, so I'm gonna, we're gonna slowly add in our chicken broth. You could use vegetable broth. You could use water. So if you wanted to make this um, a little bit more vegetarian and not use the vegetable broth, you certainly could. I mean, chicken broth, you certainly could do that. So you can see, see how that's getting that incorporated in slowly and it's thickening, and thickening up. Probably going to need anywhere between three, four cups, maybe a little bit more liquid. And I think that's good. I'm going to add in almost my full three cups. Look at how beautiful that is. All right, at this point, I'm going to add my uh, salt and pepper in. Now, if you don't like, uh, you could use white pepper if you don't want to see the black flakes in there. But that doesn't bother me at all. And so I think I'm going to now add the rest of it. Um, in the recipe, I did the recipe using two pounds of Yukon Gold potatoes. Um, 
I think I have a little bit more than two pounds. So I'm going to go ahead and put in the full four cups that's in this container. So you're going to need between three and four cups. All right. And then you know, let's, let's just bring that up to a little higher heat. Make sure everything is incorporated well. Okay, let me just go grab a spoon. All right, now we're gonna add our potatoes. And we're going to add our corn. Stir that together. Now I have not forgot about the cream and the milk. That's going to go in once this is all cooked through. So we're gonna go up to high heat and we're gonna bring this to a boil. It shouldn't take that long. Although my corn's still a little frozen. So, all right, we'll be back when that is at our full rolling boil. Okay, our corn chowder has come to the boil. And- um, the boil patch that the cover was on? Hmm, well, that's an interesting question. Um, it would boil faster initially, but I think it would affect the cooking process. I don't know if there's a scientific answer behind that, but I think it would lengthen the end time of the cooking because you've got to remember as, as you're bringing it to a boil, the corn is getting, you know, the frozen corn is, uh, you know, heating up, the potatoes are starting to soften. So I don't know. That's the best answer I could come up with. Okay. All right, now, I, I don't have this in the recipe, but a lot of times with us uh, uh, stews and soups and stuff, I always use a little bit of accent. I don't put it in the recipe all the time, um, just because a lot of people have a problem with MSG. We don't. I love it. So uh, at this point, I'm going to put in a half a teaspoon of accent. All right, so we've come to a nice, nice boil there. And we're going to turn this down to a simmer. And we are going to cover this. Now, what are we covering it for? Not to bring it to a boil. Uh, we're covering it so that we don't um, have any more evaporation. Uh, we want to keep our liquid where it is. All right, so that's going to take um, really anywhere, you know, 5, 10, 15 minutes, ten, say 10, 15 minutes. What um, your goal here is, is to get your potatoes to become fork tender. All right, and when they're ready, we'll be back and finish up. All right, it's been 15 minutes. Let's check our potatoes. Ooh, looking good to me. Let's see. Make sure they're fork tender. And get one. Perfect. Yep. All right, so then the next stage is we're gonna add all of this beautiful milk and cream. And we're gonna bring this, not necessarily to a boil, we wanna get everything all heated through. So I'm gonna leave it. I'm gonna just go up a little bit to about medium low. And uncovered, we'll just let that simmer for a few minutes. Um, well, actually, before we do that, I think I will bring it. Let's let's bring it back to a boil while we're here. Mmm, 
Look at how delicious that looks. All right, I'm going to let it um, come to a boil, and then we'll come back, and we'll turn it down to a simmer. All right, guys, so we've come back to a boil. I know you know what a boil is, but um, I just wanted to add that at this point, we're going to turn it down to a low simmer. All right, and we're going to just let that simmer away, but now is a good time to test it for salt and pepper. Mmm. It's good, but I think it does need a little bit more salt. I'm going to probably put a couple pinches in. Three. And we need a, definitely need a good pinch of pepper. All right, so I'm just going to stir that all in. And we're going to let this hang out and simmer for about 10 minutes or so. All right, when we come back, it should be close to supper time. Okay, we've uh, been simmering for about uh, 15 minutes. Um, it's uh, reduced uh, a little bit more. Um, to me, this is the perfect consistency for uh, corn chowder. Um, if you did want to make a little bit thicker, you could always do a, a little uh, cornstarch corn starch slurry. Um, but start out slowly with that because you don't want to over thicken it. But to me, that's perfect. All right. There is our corn chowder. Okay, the best part of cooking. It's finally mm. time to eat. Oh, yeah. um, we're, we're, we're tasting a couple different things we've cooked today. So since our soup is really hot still, why don't we start with, well, let's start with the veggies, no? Start with the veggies? Yeah. Okay. Um, so this is our... Brussels sprout, sweet potato, red onions, with a beautiful pomegranate mm. glaze or sauce. Mm, let's see. Mmm. That is pretty darn tasty. That is so good. If I don't see it on myself. Mm. This is, um, you know, an excellent um, uh, roast um, vegetables. Um, it's vegetarian. Mm. This goes wonderful with any kind of um, beef dish, especially if you're planning on doing uh, beef for uh, the uh, Christmas or New Year's. This would go delicious mm. with um, uh, any kind of roast or steak. And this with, with a beautiful prime rib and uh, baked potato with all the fixings would be mm. delicious. Mmm. Oh. Mmm. That is delicious. It is, huh? Mm. Yeah, that um, mm. the pomegranate uh, sauce it's just got a little sweet sour salty mm. kick to it mm. it's delicious I think <laughs> the this. pomegranate sauce like, it's a nice touch yeah. <laughs> mm. 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 that's delicious All right now let's move on to our soup we're gonna eat all of that but mm. All right, so now the classic garnish for corn chowder is crumbled bacon, but really you can put anything on it. I didn't do any bacon uh, with it tonight. Um, I could put, uh, you know, fry up a couple, uh, four, five, six mm -hmm. uh, slices of um, bacon, crumble them up, um, some bacon bits, even just chopping it with some um, almonds would be delicious or um, sunflower seeds. Anyway, toppings are endless, but my favorite topping, oyster crackers. <laughs> and I got to get them in the little packages like this. No, we didn't go to every restaurant in town and uh, take them, order soup and take them home, but he loves oyster crackers and in the little packets. So, mm, the best. that's what we're going to do today. Throw them in there. And let's give our corn chowder a taste. Uh, it should be. <laughs> Mmm, mmm. <laughs> it's <hot and> delicious. <laughs> that's good. That's good. Mm. 
That is absolutely delicious. tasty. Mm. Mm. And relatively quick and easy just to throw together. Um, now, as I said on the mm. on our roasted vegetables, we mentioned the um, pomegranate sauce. That's in a separate video, well, as all three of these are in a separate video. Um, but I would encourage you guys to try that pomegranate sauce. Believe me, mm. you'll find so many uses for it. Uh, click on the video link at the end of this video. Mm -hmm. yep. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that's all I got to say. I'm going to eat. <laughs> Please check us out on cherryhillhomecooker.com. Like and subscribe. And we'll see you later. Ciao. Wow. Bye. Mm -hmm. Mm. In fact, you made this one, right? You know, it's I remember, I remember it's been a long time. Mm. Cause you always want to go down to